What concerns me is the politicians being compromised in this whole Adelaide build cargo cult uh, mindset, as Tony Abbott used to call it, where it had to all be run through marginal seats and that's where the build would be, whether we needed to build it or could build it in Australia, whether we were better to get it off the shelf from overseas. And then the fiddling that goes on at Russell, at Defence Headquarters, for two reasons. One, we have to have an Australian bespoke something or other, which means it never actually gets off the draft plans into operational duty. And a whole lot of people in, in defence who leave defence and then go and work for all these defence companies who are compromised coming in and saying, you know, pick our thing over this one over here, to the same people that used to salute them when they were working there a few months earlier. So these two things collide and it's almost as if when we're at war, we have a war cabinet. We often have a war cabinet that is, uh, picks up people right across the parliament. You almost think at this crucial time in our history, you needed a bipartisan, two major party uh, process because one will always inherit what the other one's decided and have to finish things up or live with bad decisions. Can't we do something dramatically different like that? Well, I do think we need to do something dramatically different. Um, it hasn't always been a partisan question. I mean, uh, Abbott, I thought, had an excellent plan to get Japanese submarines. If we got Japanese submarines built in Japan, the first one would be half built by now. It'd be nearly in sea trials. But then Turnbull assassinated yeah, well, Abbott's submarines. Yeah, we Christopher Pine for that. So, yeah, but, but, you know, Turnbull assassinated Abbott's submarines. Then Turnbull committed to French submarines. Stupidly, we said we're going to build them in Adelaide. So it's, the French weren't at fault here, really. They could have built them much cheaper and much quicker if they'd have built them in France and we hadn't kept tinkering with the design. But anyway, come what may, for better or for worse, Morrison assassinated Turnbull's submarines. I think what we need... So the Albanese government, uh, and again, leaving party politics aside, is structurally much better mm. placed than the coalition government was because the defence minister is the deputy prime minister, whereas, you know, until Peter Dutton came along... You know, the coalition defence ministers from journey from David Johnson to Linda Reynolds. Good Appalling. God. And, Appalling. And then yep, and then the foreign minister is a very senior person. They're all on board. Uh, they want this to happen. Conroy, I think, is actually quite good in defence industry. And um, you know, China has educated us about what we need to do, but they have to drive it through. Uh, straight away. So the great thing about the Corvettes, you know, so we've got these heavy British frigates that are being built. You can build the Corvettes, you can build six Corvettes, you could build 12 Corvettes before we get a single frigate. If we go back to the air warfare destroyers, which John Howard commissioned, you could get those in the water before we get a single frigate. Um, the Both the Morrison government and the Albanese government, it's been terribly slow, this guided missile um, uh, capability. We want to be able to build our own missiles in Australia. Well, they've got to press the button on that now and get going. And the only way you get to the end of the journey is to begin the journey. Uh, now, I think the one mm. big mistake Miles made was to reappoint all the leadership of the Australian Defence Force and the Defence Department. They're all good Australians. I'm not defaming them. They're all patriotic, fine people, etc. But nobody in defence ever takes responsibility. You get 15 years of woeful, no. terrible failure to deliver and then all the folks who supervised that dismal failure, they kind of all get promoted. Um, so, but having said all that, we're going to get the clearest statement now in the Defence Strategic Review and in the submarine plan, in the AUKUS agreement, in everything that Albanese, Albanese will go to Washington and he'll announce the subs with, with Joe Biden and Rishi Sunak. Uh, the, this Defence Strategic Review is going to have all of this emphasis on missiles and drones and swarming munitions and so forth. Now, the, the big question is, can they drive through and actually make it all happen? Because if Defence does this in the normal manner that Defence does it, then nothing will happen. I mean, let, let me give you one example. We're supposed to have a naval base in, in Manus and the... the Defence Force built a jetty there which is too small even for our offshore patrol vessels to pull up at. And we announced this as a mm. major thing years and years and years ago. And Manus is a critical piece of geography. You can support, uh, you know, the, the American forces in the Pacific from Manus, but nothing has happened. So, 
you know, Miles, Albanese, Wong, I do believe they get it and now they've got to deliver every single project. Greg Moriarty told Senate Estimates uh, today or yesterday that um, the government's response to the DSR would be regarded as a firm operational decision by defence and they would implement it straight away. Well, and we've all got to keep their we'll feet see. to the fire, Peter. We've got to make sure they do it.